Almost exactly one year ago, I tried to do the impossible. Eat my own Christmas tree. Why? Because I'm a YouTuber. Need I say more? I learned that some trees are non-toxic and I was all like, I can eat you. But there's a big difference between something being possible in theory and something being done in reality. And as you might expect, when I tried to eat an entire Christmas tree, the results were... mixed. Yep. It's tree. But now I'm back to try again. A year older and a year wiser. Though apparently not wise enough to just scrap the entire idea outright. So again, I ask the question. Can I eat my entire Christmas tree? Only this time, can I eat it disguised as these? Better yet, can I trick Steph into helping me? Loyal theorists break out the sandpaper because we're sneaking sawdust to Santa Claus. Hopefully it doesn't get us on the naughty list. Or sent to the hospital. Internet, welcome to Food Theory, where today it's the season of giving. Giving your loved ones holiday cookies filled with sawdust, that is. Today it's round two in what has inexplicably become a yearly challenge, eating the entirety of a Christmas tree. You see, I hate seeing dead trees left on the curb at the end of the holiday season. Not only is it a depressing way to end the season of lights, but it's also just a waste of trees. Like, you cut it down for, what, a month of festive joy? It's not enough. If you're sacrificing the tree, well then let's put it to use. And since I'm no ancient Egyptian papyrus expert, the only thing I can think of is eating that thing. But as I proved last year, eating each individual part of the tree, while possible, is not necessarily pleasant. But what if? What if there were a way of disguising that tree inside of something else? Something a bit sweeter. Something delicious. Something festive. Something like, say, a Christmas cookie. One year ago, almost to the day, we had a crazy idea. We learned that Christmas trees are actually non-toxic. Well, not all Christmas trees, just some Christmas trees, but hey, there's a possibility of you being able to eat the entirety of your Christmas trees all the way down the line. Instead of throwing it out to the curb, you could eat your Christmas tree. So we decided to do that. And then we decided that just because you can do something, you probably shouldn't necessarily do it because it was the worst. And just like that, my dreams of consuming my entire Christmas tree were gone, at least until earlier this year, that is, when I saw a video from William Osmond and iDubbbz in which they tried to sneak as much sawdust as they could inside of Rice Krispie Treats. In fact, I think they discovered that you could get around a third of the Krispie Treat swapped out for sawdust. And so I was like, aha! My dream of being able to eat my entire Christmas tree lives again! What if we sneak it into Christmas cookies? Those things are really sweet. There's a lot of places that you could hide sawdust there. What if I grind up a Christmas tree and consume it that way? So that, my friends, is the crazy experiment that we're on today. Round two! Eating it the traditional way didn't work, so what if we sneak it into a whole bunch of cookies? Question number one, how much sawdust can we get away with inside of our Christmas cookies? And question number two, if we're able to do that, how many Christmas cookies would we need to consume in order to eat the entire Christmas tree? Is it a dumb idea? Yes, but it was also dumb the first time. I feel like this one might be less dumb. In fact, I predict my hypothesis, my food hypothesis, is that this one is actually going to be tastier than last year. Maybe by year three, we'll actually determine something that's actually edible. So first things first, let's actually talk about the sawdust that we're using here, which likes to brand itself as wood flour. Uh, but it's actually a fine sawdust that's been filtered in order to eliminate all those lumps. You know, because when you're baking with sawdust, you don't want those lumps in there. It's not like mashed potatoes or anything. So this actually isn't me going out and grinding up my own Christmas tree. This is actually the same stuff that William Osmond and iDubbbz used for their video. And uh, when you open it up, it's actually really interesting. The, f the texture of it is actually incredibly soft. It, it does feel like a fine powder, similar to like a flour. Um, it's a little bit grainier. Like as I'm digging around in it, it's kind of sticking to itself a bit. Uh, flour usually kind of shifts around, so it does feel slightly different, but for the most part, almost totally interchangeable with flour. Uh, it's also worth noting that this should be 
okay to consume. They do say avoid breathing dust. You can consume it, but just don't breathe in the dust of it. So first things first, we have to determine how much sawdust is too much sawdust for your Christmas cookie. At which point does it feel decidedly less festive to eat? We're gonna start with just four ounces of basic sugar cookie dough. Easy, standard, it should be delicious. From there, we're gonna mix in various percentages of sawdust to see at which point does the cookie start to become a little bit more questionable. And then on top of that, we're gonna figure out if we can mix some sawdust into the icing as well, because that's another place that we can hide this stuff. So without any further ado, let's start mixing some dough. First off, we're gonna measure out this dough. Four, perfect, 100% dough. Should be delicious, this is our control group. So we've got our control. Next thing we're gonna do is mix in various amounts of sawdust to get us our various percentages. So first, we're gonna do 0.4 ounces of sawdust, and then we're gonna mix that in with 3.6 ounces of the cookie dough, which in total should get us up to 10% of the cookie. And we're doing this by weight, since things are gonna change a little bit when we actually bake them. So. 0.4 ounces of sawdust going right into the bowl. Now we're gonna mix it in with our three six ounces of cookie dough. And that should give us our 10% sawdust cookie. Exciting times. And then we're just gonna do that over and over again at different percentages, which we will show you on screen right now. Isn't that right, editors? Oh my gosh, there's no way that we're getting. Yeah, this does not look appetizing at all. And this is only 10%. I'm very concerned about this. This is 10%? So, um, this is not working at all. Kind of makes sense if I had stepped back and thought about this before I started putting on the cameras, because we're already dealing with dough. By using that, I'm already using pre-made dough, so I'm just trying to mix in more flour, in this case sawdust flour, mix in more flour into something that already has the appropriate amount of flour in it. So I'm just adding more to the mix, thereby making it drier. So I guess I just have to make dough from scratch, and instead of incorporating flour into something that already exists, instead using this as a flour alternative and mixing it in in various amounts to achieve those percentages that we were talking about before. So catch you on the other side. And we're back after considering our life choices. So the problem with the original dough plan was that the dough was already made. So all the requisite flour for that dough was already mixed in. If we want the sawdust to actually serve as a flour replacement, we have to go back to scratch. So we found a sugar cookie recipe that calls for one and a half cups of flour. So this is going to be our control. From here though, we're gonna make other doughs that are mixing in sawdust to replace certain amounts of the flour. 10%, 20%, 30%, etc. by weight. So weighing this in, it came in at 228 grams for a cup and a half of flour. So what we're going to do is take 22.8 grams of sawdust which is 10% of that amount, mix it in, add the rest into flour, and boom, that's your 10% cookie. And so on and so forth. Show up the chart, editors. Boom, it's gonna appear right here. And now it's gonna move over here. And now it's gonna move right in the middle. There it is, there's your math. Hopefully they did everything that I just asked them to do. Knowing the editors, they didn't do that. So we're doing 22.8 grams of sawdust to replace in the flour, that'll give us our 10% cookie here, 22.7, okay. So this, my friends, is our 10% cookie. 228 grams mixed in here of flour and sawdust. 10% made of sawdust. So now, we're gonna do it 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. Cue the montage. I don't have much footage of me doing the flour. Matt's saying don't cue any montage because that footage doesn't exist. So, um, cue the transition. So we've measured out all our sawdust flour combinations here, and I gotta say, initial observation, I'm concerned about the stability of these cookies. Take for instance the 50% mix here. What you immediately notice is the huge amount of volume of sawdust relative to the little amount of flour. This is a 50-50 mix of flour to sawdust by weight. The important thing there is that the sawdust is so much less dense than the flour. It is so much lighter. As a result, you need a lot more sawdust to match the amount of flour that you're putting in here. I think that that's gonna translate to some very unstable and very crumbly cookies, since flour is, you know, the thing that's helping to hold all this together, and I don't think sawdust is really gonna stand in for that, so. 
I don't know, friends. I would be surprised to see if we get a solid, stable cookie beyond the 20% mark. At this point, it's time to actually make all these individual doughs, which means, you know, at this point, we're just making a regular sugar cookie dough. So we got our sugar, we got our baking powder, we got our milk, egg, vanilla, all that stuff. Everything else is gonna be running as normal. The only variable here is the amount of sawdust in the flour mixture. So we're gonna run through this six times just to get us started, we're making some basic cookie mix here. So uh, starting off with our wet ingredients, a half cup of butter, half cup, that's the whole stick. Mm, no wonder everyone loves cookies so much. Boom, there it is, whole thing in the pot. Half cup of sugar and mix. Wait. Doing a great job creaming in there. Matt is behind the camera being like, you're so stressful when you're cooking. And I, I so enlighten me, what should I do, Matt? Everything differently. Everything different. Why, what, what would I do? Well, first off, the butter was supposed to be softened and this is hard as a rock. It's the energy that you bring to the kitchen. It's the energy that I bring, what, that I want things to work? It's a stressful day, Matt, okay? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> In my aggressive baking, I dropped a giant globule of butter sugar on the floor. Five second rule, it's fine. Next up with stressful times cooking with Matt Pat, we're adding in our flour and sawdust mixture in gradually with our wet ingredients over here. All right, so last up, baking powder and salt. That's that guy. And lastly, we've got a little pinch of salt. So this is our sawdust dough, 10%. It's a little bit drier than I think a normal sugar cookie dough would be, but not by too much. And that could just be my imagination because I know what's in here. There's raw egg in this, so I'm not suppo so supposed to eat it, but I like to live on the edge, so. I don't know if it's just my imagination. Tastes like I'm eating a little bit of wood. Definitely feels like I'm like, eating a cookie and then chewing on a toothpick. I'm also noticing that immediately you can tell that there is a browner color than, than kind of you would associate with a normal traditional sugar cookie. So the sawdust is already making itself known even though it's only at 10%. Interestingly enough though, you know, still very good consistency, still a great dough. I'd be able to make this into a cookie no problem. So from a consistency standpoint, that feels about the same, but from a flavor standpoint, you might be able to tell already. That's one of the reasons why Stephanie has to stay a neutral observer in this little experiment, because she doesn't know what's coming to her. She thinks there's just gonna be a bunch of Christmas joy headed her way. Little does she know that she's gonna be munching on a two by four. Our doughs are all made and immediately you can start to tell a couple differences here, my friends. First and foremost, hey, when you don't have any sawdust in your cookie dough, it looks normal, it tastes normal, it behaves normally. On the other end of that spectrum, you got, wow, at 30% sawdust, you got basically sand in a bag. And then 40% is still in saran wrap for a reason, because as soon as I open this thing up, it's tumbling everywhere. We didn't even try with 50%. Oh. Let's be honest, 50% is still 50% in the bowl, and that's where it's gonna stay. So there really does seem to be a critical differentiator here between 20% sawdust and 30% sawdust. And immediately, as we were mixing it up, you could tell that the sawdust was just absorbing the liquids that we were putting into it so much faster and so much more completely that it wasn't able to adhere as a dough. So it seems like 20% is gonna be our sweet spot here, but to know for sure, we gotta bake them up, which means rolling them out and cutting out, in true form, Christmas trees. Look, based on the coloring of this, you would think that this is a delightful gingerbread. Like I see this and I'm like, ooh, it's a nice soft gingerbread. Boom, like that. Oh. You know how when you go to like Home Depot or something to choose a color of paint and you get those color swatches of like, well, here's the light brown option, here's the darker brown option, and here's the black option. I feel like this is the same way. Here's the light brown, here's the dark brown, and here's the black. So there you go, friends. Probably in that order of flavor as well. Here's 30%, mmm. It's like playing with less enjoyable kinetic sand. Maybe we'll get a cookie out of this. Maybe we can squeeze out two. Do we have a cookie? We do! <laughs> all right, all right. We're gonna make something out of it. Do we dare spit in the face of the gods and tempt fate and say, you know what? We're gonna make a 40% cookie. Can we do it? <sighs> Look, if I, maybe if I squeeze it really hard. 
Ooh, it, it does stick together slightly. Look, ah, look, it, you can create a ball out of it, a little sawdust ball. Oh. Nope. So we're down to our final three. You are the three. You are our last great hope. So miraculously, we managed to get some cookies out of all these doughs. Obviously, the less sawdust was a lot easier, but even over in 30% sawdust land, we got something that vaguely resembles a put together solid, thick Christmas cookie. So, into the oven they go, and we'll see what comes out. All right, so I just pulled the cookies out of the oven, and I gotta say, what looked a little bit sketchy in dough form is actually looking really passable now that everything's fully cooked. So at this point, we just need our neutral observer to give us her verdict. So I'm going to label these uh, one to four so that way I can know which ones are which and which ones correspond to which amount of sawdust. And then from there, we'll get uh, Stephanie's objective opinion as to how they taste. So my cookies are all prepared. Time to get our objective taste test from Stephanie. Steph, you busy? Uh, can you, I, I, I have a little surprise for you. Can, can you, can you come down? Steph, can you get on the mic? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I'm on the mic. Sorry. Just... I'm worried. <laughs> I'm worried about what's going on here. <laughs> <I'm> not... <laughs> did you bake something? I did. I oh, made you some no. Christmas cookies for the holidays. What? <laughs> I made you some delightful Christmas cookies for the holidays, Steph. I know that I am not the best in the kitchen. Matthew does not find kitchen activities relaxing. It's a stressful day, Matt. <laughs> Leave me alone. How do we want to how do we want to start this? I think let's uh let's try number 4. I'm noticing that someone left him in the oven just a tad too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. They were left in the oven slightly too long. Oh, but it tastes really good. Oh, I'm sorry I'm in front of you. This is really good. You did a really good job. Up to 3. Mm -hmm. Got a little smushed on the top there. No, but he's he's actually, this is a really nice done. It's a good bake, yeah. All right, all right. And did you cook these in order? Did you learn as you went? No, they were actually put in at the same time, so I'm not 100% sure. Mm. Pretty good? Yeah. Yeah, this tastes completely fine. I mean, Should well, it taste good? Yeah, did you add a little extra salt in this one? No, I'm try. Yeah, I like that it's a little soft in the middle. Like I said, this is like a really good bake. Um, it's crispy on the outside, but still get that buttery flavor. Uh huh. I like it. Good. Here, give me a, give me a taste of two. Okay. Oh wow. Looks similar. This to is real. No, this is like the perfect consistency. This is like the exact same co color all over. Yeah. So if the bake matters, this is very good. Thank you. Thank you. It's really nice. Yep. Thank you. I'm very proud of that. What's up? This this recipe is definitely different. Okay. And then uh, lastly, try this guy. Okay. It's this guy, dry. it looks like it, more like a gingerbread cookie mm -hmm. sometimes, or like a gingerbread ginger snap that where you roll them really thin. Yeah. I know you love your gingerbread cookies. I actually love gingerbread snap. cookies, so maybe. Mm -hmm. All right. It's weird because it still tastes sweet. Okay. Ish. Good. But it's much less sweet than like this one. Uh -huh. I don't get any of the butter at all. And then like the first few bites, it was fine. <laughs> what is this? No, what is no. This? What <laughs> is, Matt, what is this cookie? I'm getting an uncomfortable feeling in my mouth. It's kind of really? kind of gritty. Huh, interesting. It sits on the back of my tongue in a weird way. <laughs> What's in this cookie? Me. It's the bark. You put the bark in or something dumb. It's, uh, it's, it's sawdust. It's, it's literal sawdust. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's what? Just think out how much of a tree you can put into a cookie to try and eat your Christmas cookie. There's sawdust in this? Yeah. How much sawdust is in here? Is this whole thing saw? Oh. 30% by weight. Thirty <laughs> percent? Oh God! No wonder I feel sick. I feel no, sick. No, no, it's, it's it's fine. It's edible sawdust. It's fine. It's non-toxic. Totally safe for wood glue. I do want to try one last thing though, because a naked Christmas cookie is not the greatest, right? So you're saying that the flavor started to really decline around the twenty to thirty percent mark, mm -hmm. right? So what I'd love to try is if we did thirty percent. I'm not tasting that again. If we did twenty percent, <laughs> but with icing. Seasonal holiday icing, and then you could tell me, does the icing actually cover up the flavor of the sawdust? This one is softer, the softer bake. Can't believe I was like complimenting the way that these were cooked. 
The texture you can't cover up with the icing. Yeah. But the flavor, hands down, easy. The flavor is almost exactly the same as this one, and mm -hmm. I think it would be almost exactly as the same as the Control 2. Knowing that we can get away with about 44 grams of sawdust in a typical batch of cookie dough here, the question now remains, how many cookies do we need to eat in order to consume the entirety of the Christmas tree, Steph? Oh boy. Just one cookie at a time. That sounds like a question for VO. VO, Matt, Pat, do that calculation and take it home. Happy to take it from there past Matt, Pat. So as we mentioned earlier, there were 228 grams of flour in the dough recipe, and we settled on the 20% sawdust cookie as the acceptable amount of wood inside our dessert, which meant 45.6 grams of sawdust in each batch. Now, a typical Christmas tree weighs in at about 59 pounds, or 26,762 grams. So dividing that by the amount of sawdust we're using in each dough gives us 580. 87, which is a lot of cookies to eat in order to consume an entire Christmas tree. But remember, that's not the amount of cookies, that's the amount of batches of cookies. Each glob of dough is gonna make you about 18 cookies, which means that to eat an entire Christmas tree, you're not looking at 500 cookies, you're looking at 10,500. Specifically, 10,566. That is uh, not gonna jive well with the whole New Year's diet. Statistics say an average person will eat 300 cookies in a year. To get through that tree, we're talking 35 times that amount. In short, if you wanted to get through the whole thing by the end of January, you'd need to be eating about 341 cookies per day. But all right, I'm in it for the long term. I can be patient. As long as that thing is used up before I buy my next new tree for the following Christmas, we should be all good. So how many cookies am I talking about then? Well, you're still looking at 33 cookies per day. And while I love me some Christmas cookies, my waistline does not. You'd basically be getting your entire daily recommended calorie limit per day on cookies. And not even good ones either. We're talking about cookies that are 20% wood. Meaning that, yet again, I'm defeated. Curse you, Christmas tree! It's almost like you were never meant to be eaten in the first place. But I'll be back. Maybe. I mean, I just consumed way too much fiber, so no promises. I may still be in the bathroom this time next year. And all of this is without even me talking about Stephanie's question from earlier. Are sawdust cookies safe to eat in the first place? Probably not in those quantities. Honestly, I don't think any cookie, sawdust or no, is going to be safe in those quantities. You know what is safe, though? Your home when protected by the sponsor of today's episode, Simply Safe. Boom! Seamless transition for the win. Smooth like butter. The sawdust soaked butter that I just consumed for the past few hours of my life. Friends, a home security system is just one of those things that it's easy to make excuses to not invest in. It's expensive, the systems are hard to install, the footage looks like it was taken on a 2008 Prius backup camera, but with Simply Safe, those concerns just don't exist. Their professional monitoring service starts at just 50 cents per day. You're spending more than that upgrading to oat milk in your latte at the coffee shop. Second, Simply Safe is just a breeze to install. It takes just about 20 minutes to get everything set up, which is longer than it probably takes you to drink that oat milk latte. And not only can you operate everything from your phone, but Simply Safe's wireless outdoor security cameras come in with 1080p HD footage and color night vision. I mean, just look at me. Look at those pores. I could shoot an entire depressing couch episode using this thing. But most importantly, it means that you get peace of mind for your home, both while you're there and while you're away. With more and more packages being delivered to your door, and not all of us having the engineering degrees to make glitter bombs to protect them, you want something that's watching your property. And Simply Safe is the answer. A trusted home security brand in both the industry and in more than 3 million American homes. So give the gift of peace of mind this holiday season. Save 40% or more on your Simply Safe security system during their holiday sale. Visit simplysafe.com slash food theory to learn more. Link is in the top line of the description because Simply Safe is spelled in a funny way. Again, that is a savings of 40% or more. If you are remotely curious, that link is down in the description. And as always, remember friends, it's all just a theory. A food theory. Happy tea.